Yeah. Yeah, it definitely counts. I mean, they did defeat KT, right? KT was still struggling with some consistency issues back then. They are looking much better now, but it is possible. Glad that you do mention it. So jumping into the picks and bans, Jace Fan straight up against Khan. He is 7-0 on this champion, I believe. And in the interview against uh, BBQ, I believe Khan said, you know, it feels like Jace was made just for me. Sounds like true love, friend of Yeah. Us. I mean, he also said that if you're good at Jace, you can defeat anyone, basically. He feels like it's extremely OP, and he's obviously really good at the champion, so... I mean, you just gotta take it away from him. If he's talking like that, and he's also 7-0, then it's like, okay, the most obvious ban in the world, so... And take it out first. speaking of uh, champions with seven wins, BDD's Galio also taken away, 7-1, and one, but... Get this, he has a 34.3 KDA on this champion. <laughs> and I don't think Rock's Tigers wants to feed that KDA as they do first pick the Maokai. They must have seen the last match. Yeah, they've been watching. They've been watching abroad. They've been playing themselves on 714. They know how strong of a pick this is. Perhaps even stronger than the Elise. And so it will be picked up. And it looks like we will have Cuz on the Elise in that case. And obviously giving the Ash over to Prey will be on his signature champion. Talking a little bit about the AD carries as well, you expect the Caitlyn ban, but I like the Kalista ban against Songyun because he has actually somewhat built himself three wins and zero losses on this champion as we do get a review of what Maokai looks like. And Cho'Gath actually walking by. Remember that he's Ooh. also around. We might be able to see him soon. It's a nice little Easter egg in that intro video. Cho'Gath feasting himself. Not Gentleman, not Gentleman Cho'Gath though, so I was a little bit disappointed. Uh, we do have the Zaya pickup as well as Gragas, so a great front line already for this carry of Zaya. We've seen this time and time again. Songyun definitely opting for the Zaya makes a lot of sense to me. The Caitlyn's ban, his Kalista's ban, and after that, Zaya is his uh, most played champion, I feel, with two wins and six losses, but that's still eight games, and probably going to go for something he's comfortable on as BDD. Speaking of comfort, goes with Talia. And as we go into the second ban phase, I expect to see, oh, the Lucian ban coming out for Longzhu. Mm. I want to take that away from Lava, I suppose, to say, okay, we're not going to allow you to play this into Talia. They're trying to enable their mid lane carry in BDD with that pick. And a Zyra ban against Gorilla. Just looking at the champions he's played, uh, Gorilla, eight games on Zyra and 12 games on Thresh, so that might leave the Braum open unless Key takes it for himself. And another mid lane ban, LeBlanc against Lava. Lava, one of these players, I think a lot of people are just basically calling the weakest mid laner in the LCK. And to be fair, it's it's I think it's um, a reasonable thing to say. He was yeah. somewhat thrown to the wolves, as I like to call it, in the second round as Mickey left the Rock Tigers roster. Hey, Trundle, he definitely was, and uh, he's he's struggling to find success here uh, on a kind of weakened rocks lineup. But yeah, as you mentioned, the troll returns. This time, it's not so trolly. And I'm excited to see Khan on this kind of play, on this kind of pick, a, a split pusher, someone who can really get in your face and go 1v1 with pretty much any, anyone, especially that Maokai in the top lane. And Lava in response takes uh, Syndra, another bursty mid lane mage champion. I really like the respect that Longzu is giving to Lava. Maybe it's not respect, maybe from their perspective, it's more like, we're not gonna let you do anything this game. Yeah. But. The Trundle for Khan as well, also noteworthy. And Key does take that Braum away from Gorilla. So Gorilla might, he might play something crazy, I'm not sure, but he does always have the Janna, which is somewhat becoming meta. He has options like Kennen, Blitzcrank. So we'll see what he goes for in the last pick. Morgana. Morgana. Okay, let's see if he actually locks it in though. Oh, please do. I mean, this, this pick is being picked up uh, a couple of times over in NALCS, I believe it was. I don't remember exactly who picked it up, but there it is. we're seeing it more and more often. And it's kind of a cool idea that that Black Shield is obviously very good for all the magical engage that these compositions are throwing at you. You know, Twisted v Advance or even a Maokai Ultimate or a Cask can be easily dodged with the well-timed Black Shield. Key changing it up in the last second to Rakan. 
Didn't catch that. I still thought he was playing Grom, but let's talk about this Morgana because players have been playing it in solo queue a lot recently, uh, including Gorilla, of course, who's playing right now, but also Core JJ, who played the last match. If you look at his uh, solo queue records, he's been playing a lot of support Morgana, so I was wondering if we might see it in the LCK. Usually, stereotypically, Korea is not known as the most innovative region, but tonight we've seen plenty of new things come out, so I'm really enjoying the, the novelty of the matches. Yeah, it definitely is really cool to see all of these new picks come in with just one new patch. And yeah, I like the idea of the Morgana too. It's like if you really want to hard engage on us, you might even get five man, you know, rooted by that Morgana or just eat a Q to the face and not be going anywhere for a very long time. And the Black Shield has to be excellent against the Syndra. It's going to just block all that magic damage, keep the prairie alive for much longer or BDD alive for much longer as we get one final look at the team compositions. Shy couldn't make it work and Smeb couldn't make it work. Let's see if Khan could make the troll work in his third appearance recently. I, I have faith. Uh, I, I'm, it's Khan. Yeah, it is it is Khan and he is up against Linderong. So definitely a one-sided match in the top lane. And either way, guys, this is the final look at the skins. Let's jump into game number one of Longju versus the Rocks Tigers. Okay, well, <laughs> Long Ju, they, they brought everybody and their moms with them as they have a huge cheer from the crowd. These guys, it makes sense. Everybody does like to cheer for the favorite team, and these guys are on a roll looking for their, I believe it's fifth in a row. Yeah, fifth in a row. No, they're sixth, sixth. in a row, yeah. actually, as they have five games against Afrika, MVP, BBQ, SKT, and Ever8. Speaking of Long Zhu, Going for early, you know, group and invade into the enemy jungle, I think this is mainly because they do have, have the Morgana. That level one Q, the bind, could be really long, but the Rocks Tigers with a good response, I feel, sending their top end jungle into the red side jungle of Longzu and also the Rakan sneaking in through the tri brush and warding the blue buff of Longzu as well. So overall, I feel like Rocks Tigers should feel really comfortable because they get to see everything, but Still, the Longzhu squad has proven themselves. I mean, they're first place for a reason, right? And I know you were talking about the fans. It almost feels like the fans have been wishing every season, it's happening, it's happening. Well, it has happened. They are in first place now. Look at Cuz's route here. He goes for Raptors with the help of Talia. Kills all of them but the big one and then immediately goes for blue and Looks like someone has actually read this very well. He's going to go to the blue of Cuz, but this does mean that Trundle in the top lane is going to be extremely safe from level one, and he can just push in all day long. I mean, you're going up against a Maokai at level one. What are you going to do against a Trundle? Eat a bunch of chomps in the face and, and die? And so he's going to have a, a grand old time up in top lane. Uh, Fantastic hawk shot by Trey. He knows exactly what's gonna, what's gonna, you know, what's likely to happen as he sniffs out Sunghwan. And speaking of the bottom lane, Gorilla is two for two, at least from what we've seen on camera, in terms of landing that binding. Could be very dangerous for the Rocks Tigers in the next few minutes. Yeah, just some target practice for now, as those don't really do too much damage. They just kind of zone your opponent out at this level. And you can see what Khan is doing. I mean, he's just pushing it in. It's totally fine to do this. And Linderong is the one putting saplings in the brush, saying, oh, I hope I don't get dived early by this Elise, because that is also another option for Kuz after he does pick up this red buff. Somehow on a sneaky gank as he belly flops down to the dragon pit and makes his way to the bottom lane without getting seen, but the black shield, there it is. Yeah, good luck ganking prey here. I mean, you're going to need a big follow-up from Key and also Sangyun to make sure that you do get that off. But as he was seen, it was an easy retreat from Longju. Must be so fun being a Longju team member with having such a reliable bottom lane. Uh, Khan specifically, again, going back to that post-match interview after the BBQ match, saying 
it feels almost impossible not to produce results when you're on the same team as Gorilla and Prey. So it really shows the type of leadership, although, you know, Khan, not exactly a rookie player. But for Cuz, definitely a lot of support and leadership he could look up to. Oh, that ward by Key. That was very key, <laughs> if you will. And oh, he actually jumps on in, almost baiting Cuz into this one. If he can land a cocoon, maybe, but not even going to try for it. I'm not, I'm that not actually sure works. sure he actually saw uh, with the ward because I just don't understand the decision to go in unless he, you know, on purpose kind of wanted to go for a flashy move like that because he didn't have any backup coming. Yeah, I I think it was just to stop the recall because yeah. you can see he immediately hopped back. He was like, nope, I'm out of here. Goodbye. Might have just been because he missed the grand entrance, but either way, does end up kind of messing with Cuz a little bit. And the junglers keep on farming as to all the lanes, but BDD heading up top, heading up top, decides not to follow up on that. No vision at all up top. And look at how low Linderong is. I mean, just oh, one yes. pillar. Okay, he does have his flash, but this is an easy follow up. Nice cue though from Linderong and a flash away. Well timed as Cuz decides to use that repel to try to get into the fight. And Linderong, again, it's a matter of, you know, the Rocks Tigers top laners. It, it feels like a vacant position. It feels like a position of, um, of weakness that other teams could exploit. When I saw Linderong on the roster instead of Shy, it, it it kind of brought a sad little tear to my eye as Shy's been trying and he's been playing a lot of recent games, but hasn't been finding success, especially culminating in that Jax loss last time he played. I'm sure the fans must have been really looking forward to that Jax, but it didn't work out and now they put in Linderong, but he's getting out farmed by this trundle. A miss all this top lane pressure as well. Okay, we got a fight down in bottom lane. Gorilla getting pretty low, as perhaps he wasn't able to land a Q in that moment in time. So, just backs off with a bunch of health. None of the summoners are used. Cuz is just not leaving Sunghwan alone. They're just they're just both not leaving top, right? They're just hanging around here. Someone he wants to help the top laner, he wants to help the Maokai, but Cuz knows that, so he's just sticking around, saying, no, it's me, Elise, I'm back again, you didn't ban me, and you didn't pick me, so uh, I'll just terrorize you in your own jungle. Cute little move showing the uh, teamwork between Khan and Cuz. Khan using the pillow to pop up the Gragas so that he can't really get in close for the smite as Cuz secures that Gromp takes it away from him. Here's BDD now, as everybody on the side of Longju really wants to terrorize this top side. Okay, might... we have the long range engage here from Linderong. That's right, this might get a little dicey. He's gonna stun here onto Cuz, but he still has Repel. This is a four on three, actually, as he makes his way up. Now it's just up to Longju to try to get out of this one, but Khan cannot. It's gonna be first blood going over to Linderong. A bit too eager, I feel, as Khan is the first to go down, and Key with the right read, making it in, making it up to the top lane in time, but it's just one of those things. You just stay too long. And uh, arrogance or maybe overconfidence, call it what you want, but definitely a great result for the Brox Tigers. Yeah, that was just a great play by Key for sure. I mean, he saw that the bottom lane of Longju went back, so he immediately started going up top. He knew that his team was dealing with pressure up there. And you can see he makes his way all the way through the mid lane, so. Having this Maokai for engage, pushes them into the pit. Lava is able to land the stun, but then Khan skits a little bit too far forward. They weren't expecting Key to make it in here. And once he shows up, Longju had already gone too deep, and they cannot de disengage. And as the game continues, great for the Rocks Tigers as well in that they do get a lot of vision in terms of the entrances to the Longzu red side jungle. They should be able to, if they're lucky, sniff out where Elise might be headed and make some further plays off of that. Yeah. We'll see what the Elise can do in terms of finding other places to gank, because before this he was just trying to stop anything towards top lane. 
but definitely can find an opportunity down in bot, especially as Gorilla and Prey hit level six. It's gonna be up to Sangin and Ki to just try to feather storm and dash away from this engage as they will want absolutely none of this. You can see how far back they are playing as it is pushing into them as well. They know the potential in the bot lane of Longju with the help of Elise especially. They do have the Gragas behind them though and Cuz pinging that he wants to move into the river and get into that, you know, raptor area of the Rock Tiger's jungle. Ooh, Vine misses. One thing that also catches my eye is the top lane matchup. The Maokai versus Trundle is something that we saw in the first game between KT Rolster and Samsung Galaxy. And as we all know, this is a new patch. Now, in that first game, there's so much different things going on. We had a Rengar, we had a Nunu, and all kinds of, you know, hectic, chaotic fights and engages going on. But Maybe this is the, you know, in a much more controlled environment, we could really see what the difference is between the Trundle and Maokai matchup and in terms of how it goes. Because in theory, you might expect, you know, okay, Maokai is a very strong, tanky champion, but could Trundle ultimate take away all the resistances and make him vulnerable enough to really nullify the pick? That's what I really want to uh, know as this game goes on. Well, he could definitely take away that tankiness, but he can't stop the trees from ad advancing basically, unless he gets like the perfect pillar to keep Maokai totally away from the fight. A very hard feat indeed, but definitely gonna be forcing Maokai away from the team fights and just trying to split push. That is where Trundle's main strength will come in compared to the Maokai, who's a, a team fighting beast. And so, we're just trying to be avoiding that as much as possible. And because he hasn't really been able to find anything on the map, so instead he starts a very early Rift Herald, nearly right after it spawned, only 50 seconds after it spawned? Spawns in 10 minutes. And they know exactly where uh, Sungwon is, or at least generally where Sungwon is. They know that he's in the blue side jungle of Longzu because he did hit that uh, vision plant. The effect kind of rippled out on the map, so easy Rift Herald take for Longzu. Yeah, nicely done in a game where not much is happening early on. and. Rox is playing carefully enough. They can set that up. So either way, nice setup oh. here. The arrow is going to go completely wide, although they are still trying to turn it around. But here comes Lava in from the mid lane. Looks like Longju will be able to disengage in time. All the ultimates are burned, and the summoners are still intact for both bottom lanes. So Prey and Gorilla somewhat safely going back to the comfort of their own turret. Just a little bit of action. Only ultimates traded. Now Elise is making her way downstairs, or down to the bottom lane. <laughs> yeah, she was upstairs in her room. Okay, here comes Songwon. Not really able to do much as the Black Shield is used on Gorilla. <laughs> He's like... Probably, uh... Bray, you can die. I don't care about you. I gotta save myself. Probably a misclick because they, uh, the two of them were really close together when it came down. There's no way that Gragas is gonna hit the Morgana when the Ash is standing in front of her. Mm -hmm. Now at least making her way down to the bottom lane, but nothing to be found. See that Prey just steps oh. forward a little bit too much. That's as long as you were gonna take this opportunity to summon the Rift Herald, knowing that the bottom lane had recalled. And even BDD. So a first Yeah, first brick going down to Longzu. Really making the most of the recall timing of the Rock Tiger's bottom lane. Yeah, much in the way that key made use of Prey and Gorilla's recall to help out with the first blood. Longju similarly has a team do the same in the bottom lane. So it does mean that they can't really set up any more kills for Prey and Gorilla, which is kind of interesting. You know, they, they don't have the crazy Wombo Combo, Ash Arrow, Binding, Morgana Ultimate, you know, all this good stuff. But uh, they will free them up to look for engages as a team elsewhere on the map. Meanwhile, Rox is going for this Mountain Drake. The Cocoon is going to land in a totally max range there. Oh. And a huge seismic shove. What a play by BDD. But as I say that, this is turning around. Cuz is going to go down as well as Gorilla. These guys are not as tanky as they believe. But Rox, have they pushed too far forward? Prey, Prey still on flash. the chase. He's going to flash. He's going to flash. He's going to tag down Linderong here, dodging that stun too. Connie's looking for the pillar. He's extremely fast. 
Can they actually knock him off? Bray trying to sacrifice his life. Great There's pillar. the Thriller, and the Feather Storm comes out. Can he drag it into someone? He does into Khan, One but more. the last auto gets him on his way out. What a play there from the team of Longju to be able to turn that around. And this game is starting to speed up, Brendan Valdez. After the uh, Rift Herald take from Longzu, they use the Rift Herald onto the bottom outer tier turret, and Rock's Tigers, while Longzu is recalling, decides to go for the dragon. Well, Longzu says, we're not going to let you take the dragon. We're going to have a fight. Let's take another look here at this incredible seismic shove, because that's really what gets this started. The flash seismic shove to get four of them is a beauty. Great follow-up by Gorilla as well. Although he does die, it does yeah. buy enough time for everybody to close in and let Prey basically do the cleanup duty. Gorilla just got a little bit excited. He's like, oh, we're going to win this fight big time. And he realized that he's a very underleveled Morgana compared to the rest of uh, the team. So it does go down immediately. And at the same time, Cuz is pretty weak as well, and he gets taken out. But Nice chasing there by the side of Longjoy. I think Rox, if they had picked up those two kills and backed off, that would have been really good for them. But chasing a little bit too long, and Longju able to punish them. Well, Gorilla only getting one assist off that, but I feel like he's not even mad. He's not even mad about that. He, they did get a huge win. They had 2,000 gold, all thanks to that. So great result for the Longju squad, as Rox Tiger is still putting their eyes on this Mountain Drake. They want it pretty badly, but Mengdu is sticking around at the same time. BDD about to pick up his blue, which will be very nice for the poke. And everybody's ultimates are back up again. We might see another fight happen in front of the Dragon Pit. I think it's mainly that they just want the vision around it. Uh, now that their Herald, Herald is gone, they're just trying to play by the book and go for the next neutral objective. And as far as Drakes go, a Mountain Drake is definitely something that you might want. But I like what it looks like for Longzu because Prey does have the initiative on the bottom lane, so he could send that pushing in, which could create a little bit of pressure, just like how Lava is pushing in the mid lane. Yeah. This is also a great you know, angle for an Ash ultimate. All he has to do is just shoot it straight up, down, uh, up the river. But Rock's Tiger is using their positional advantage. Being close to the mid lane, they decide to go for the mid lane outer. Sunghwan with great positioning of his own as well. Arrow is going to hit key here to a nice follow-up burst damage from BDD, but I don't think he has enough by himself. And overall, this was a pretty good play from Rox to start off. But they're trying to continue fighting here against someone who is on the run, flashes that seismic shove to get out of harm's way. After all, a couple of flashes burned. They get a nice bit of damage done to that turret. I think Longzu just goes for the more reliable uh, take as Prey did shove in the bottom lane and now they could get a free mountain break. So stopping that fight early on and even Khan gets to farm up this wave instead of wasting it while they do get the mountain Drake. Good result for Longzu. Yeah, at the end of it all, you can see the gold lead kind of getting out of order here. It's only been one First Blood turret that was given over to the side of Longju, and the CS is relatively the same except in the top lane where Khan is definitely leading, but they already have a 3,000 gold lead. And they're doing well managing their lanes. They also pick up that dragon to start. They're going to have to deal with the Lava, who's quite fed, sitting at 2-0-1 already. Already has a Haunting guys too. Yep, Lava, one of these players, again, kind of shoved into this Rock Tigers roster into the second round. And we really, I don't think anybody really knows what to expect of him as of yet. Just in totality, he's only played about 12 matches. It's, he does get down the outer mid lane turret. But it's kind of hard to know which champions he's good at. Uh, even his most played champion is Oriana, and even that's two wins and three losses. Really can't say that it's a signature pick at that point. So maybe this is the match where he really makes a statement for himself. Well, he is 1-0 on Syndra, which is nice. Looking to get another win on that champion. But yeah, doesn't really have too much experience here in LCK. Trying to shake off the rust, or not the rust, but like the, the beginner feeling. The of, greenness, the freshness. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, he doesn't have a lot of stats going for him, that's for sure. He only has a 2.5 KDA overall as other, other mid laners of the LCK probably somewhere around 
the high threes or maybe even the fives. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they would definitely love it if Sangin was the one who picked up those kills. As generally, they like to play against or with this guy. They like to play around Sangin. But he's not doing all too bad himself. Picked up a couple of assists. And Longzu feeling somewhat confident here as the bottom lane continues to push even beyond where the outer turret once stood. They must have seen something uh, that we could have missed because they're not sure. They don't have, you know, eyes directly on top of Gragas. Now they do because Gragas has moved into the Raptor camp. Yeah. There was also a ward behind them ah. just in, in the... Uh in the lane. I was saying it was a ward for the Tigers that they could have used Linderong to try to oh, set is, up yeah. a double kill, but deciding against it. And okay, they're trying to go for a kill here onto Prey oh, as he's, he he's... does engage, but he gets out of there, flashing and healing himself. I got excited there because the Rocks, Tigers, Sindra, and Gragas were moving into the blue side jungle. If they wanted, they could have had a, you know, Fervor's 4v1 onto Prey but decides to back off. I think the Rocks Tigers were somewhat intimidated that Longza could have, you know, closed in and really backed up Prey to save him and even go further behind. But I feel like they should have pulled the trigger there. Yeah, perhaps, but looks like we're gonna see a rotation here as Khan makes his way down into bottom lane, wants to continue pushing, forcing Linderong into that situation. Whereas they will send that duo lane up into the top side and use this to control the Baron area to set up dives potentially up towards the top side with Cuz. Make that happen. They don't really have a place to dive down in the bottom side and it's very far away from Baron. So I like this kind of setup. Yep. Good. Uh, as we do get a replay of what exactly threatened Prey. Ooh. Wow. Split Unlucky. an arrow. Unlucky. His yeah. RNG was quite bad there, for sure. I'm not sure if he was, um... Oh, oh another arrow okay. to Okay, he, does, he does have Merc Treads, and they didn't calculate that, so both the Binding and the Cocoon go wide. As someone, he's just taking a stroll through the river. Nice dodge there from Lava. Ooh, this guy's got his Nikes on, man. He's dodging everything. Not sure if he should have been in a position to dodge all that in the first place, but... Sure, great, great uh, happy feet coming out from Lava as he does escape along with Sung Hwan. But going back to that uh, bottom lane dive of 10, I'm just wondering if um, he actually intended to flash over the arrow instead of simply being unlucky. It was pretty close. Because, oh, he got out of position here. Perfect for Key to jump on top of him. Great presence there by the support of Rox Tigers to pick up that kill, take out the jungle. Not a great day for release players tonight, but Khan still makes it all the way into the bottom inner turret as Linderong trying to duel him. Khan is still fine. I yeah. mean, Linderong doesn't have enough mana to win this sustained fight. Look at the lifesteal. Khan is full health, still has his ultimate. Linderong knows it, and so he just has to uh, just let him be, essentially. Now, the bottom lane for the Rocks Tigers were in the mid lane, but it looks like they want to go up to the top side to take this first outer tier turret. And Khan recalling as well. Okay, they're I looking for a TP here. Here we go. Oh boy, arrow. everybody on the side of Rocks is dodging every CC that Longju has. Look at that. Oh. Prey eating a ton of damage out there from Lava. Now Khan in a weird spot is going to have to back. Wait, there's the ultimate. Prey just walking into the Syndra and eating it. And he's going to go down, obviously. Perhaps he thought maybe he didn't have his ultimate, but. That's an easy pickup for Lava for his third kill. Lava did flash for that. His flash is on cooldown right now, and I think Prey, you know, he was chunked so hard. I think Longzu had the right idea. They were about to back off, but Prey stepping forward just a little bit, and Lava taking that opportunity to flash forward and put the ult onto Prey, uh, finishing up that fight, or at least stopping it before it even happened. There it is. Let's take a look at this fight. It was really Sangyun that forced everything. What a good dodge once again. And they walk into the Syndra and the Feathers, and Prey just gets so chunked. And we're going to see the flash here. Yeah, Prey just not expecting it. There it is, right there. You could see the Longzu players somewhat turn around right before Prey gets flashed on. I think they understood, hey, Prey is low. Let's not do this. But 
a little bit too late right there. And that means that the lava hype train is, you know, yeah. it's getting ready. Just when we were talking about how he was having trouble in LCK and how he's the worst mid laner in LCK, <laughs> he's it's, like, what did you say about me? It's Syndra the one. You talking one smack one. about me? I'm lava. Oh, now cuz. Well, I think he'll live out of this. I think he'll survive this. There's going to be the flash oh. here. Okay, forcing the response out of Cuz, which is pretty nice. Meanwhile, Prey just off doing his own thing, taking an Ocean Drake in the bottom side. Rox Tiger is pressuring this top lane really hard, but it allows Prey to get the Ocean Drake. Good move by him. I think so far, Prey might be a little bit disappointed with himself because his arrows have not been the standard that we all expect from Prey usually. Yeah, I mean, it's they're slightly off course, but at the same time, Rox is really prepared today. You could tell that all the praying and deep breathing exercises they did before the match are really helping them out in their focus here. Okay, finally they land something here on Tasangin, but I mean, it's Zaya. He's got Featherstorm still, so they're not going to full on engage, especially with Sungwon and Linderong waiting nearby. Han getting a little eager there, but realizes that Maokai has the better positioning and pings onto the Baron. Ooh, another flash burned out of Gorilla. Mm -hmm. Life of a support, you have to ward that. Okay, they're trying to land bindings, you know. When you look at this team of Longju, they have four long-ranged picks with the arrow, with the binding, with the seismic shove, and with the cocoon. But it doesn't really net you a kill unless you can link up more than one. Right? You know, you get one cocoon, the guy's only going to be stuck for maybe a second. Then he's going to be out of there, even less with Merc Treads. And three of them already have Merc Treads. So they know this. Rox is preparing for all of this kind of long range CC. And it's very hard for Longju to really link up more than one, especially with the Happy Feet going on. So we got a wall coming down here. Look at how much damage Khan has taken. And in the front line as well, is going to almost go down. The ultimate coming down onto Khan. Cuz still trying to get damage. Zangin extremely low as well. Nobody can get on top of him. Finally, he goes down. Prey. Prey in the back line, totally protected. Looks like he should have enough. Khan now on the chase for Key. He's going to take him out. And Prey still alive with full health with red buff. And Key going to get chomped as he goes down a almost full ace up against Rox Tigers. You know, when that started, it looked like such a great engage for the Rox Tigers, but. I just have to look at the fight again just to make sure, but Prey, nobody was on him. That was a messy Prey was, one. Prey was free as an airplane. Yeah, even, the, even the bottom lane shoving into this inhibitor turret. Yeah. Linderong, he got spotted on a ward, so he had to move and then recall to make matters worse. And the Baron goes over to Long Zoo, and I'm, I'm actually dreading watching this replay. I hope I'm wrong, but it just... It, it just felt like nobody actually thought about Prey. All right, let's, yeah. the moment of truth. Watch Prey in this fight because, as you said, he's really the big damage dealer for them. He comes from the top side. They just don't see him. He dodges all of Maokai's stuff. And then once he gets in position, there's no one to deal with him. He's hitting Zaya. He's hitting Rakan. He's hitting Maokai, Gragas. He's literally, literally inside three people. And none of the Rock Tigers actually have the, you know, idea to actually turn on turn and get rid of the ash yeah i mean you could look at the brush the brush really hit him from that vision but you still get to see the you know auto attacking oh. champion in live okay we're gonna say goodbye to key uh, as he finally got hit by the link i was talking about as he does go down well the snowball has officially started rolling yeah we were waiting for it i was getting worried for longju but it seems like they have in fact showed up to play today you know just one final point about that team fight that's mm -hmm. why um every once in a while supports uh, if you are playing support, when there's a team fight going on, just ward everything. Just start warding everything. Don't think about, hey, maybe I should keep this vision around the Baron as Khan looks like he's getting threatened a little bit, but he's okay. But you don't want that one, you know, brush to ruin your entire team fight, right? Yeah. Sometimes you just have to throw down wards. It doesn't matter if it's a control ward, just throw it all down. 
you got to have eyes on the important members, on the carries, right? Something that Crumbs has said from time to time. But hold that thought. Pray, he's in a bit of trouble. Never mind. He Good does QSS. have QSS, QSS and QSS. he is there. But yeah, something that Crumbs has said is in the team fights, watch the carries. Where are they? Do they get jumped on? Do they do damage? Do they get in position? Another Ash Arrow missing. And he's posturing for a little bit of action, but I don't think they could catch on to Linderong. It's very careful what Longdu is doing here. The very uh, long fight coming in down the lane as they don't want to get hit by a stun from Lava. They know that he is the big carry and they can't exactly jump onto him. So respecting that damage. Good mindfulness as well to remember the low health bottom tier turret, uh, uh, bottom inhibitor turret and the way that they have prepared. Oh Rob boy. Fix. Oh. That was pretty wow. close. Meanwhile, Khan, he's being thrown around the arena. He's still okay somehow. Still hasn't gone down. They don't have enough damage to follow up. And oh boy, Lava, oh. he gets locked down for so long, hit by that binding. And you could say goodbye if you get hit by one of those long CCs. Another one goes down. Doesn't look like they'll go for that kill, but they will rotate into mid. And try to get some more objectives here with this Baron. The Flash Ooh. coming in, almost gets that seismic shove. This has turned into a full play-by-play -play stream as non-stop action on the Rift is coming out. And perhaps finally Longju will decide to go home. Again, it's the characteristic of these uh, mid to lower table teams. Once they start falling, it's like a domino effect. They keep losing one after the other. And it's just such a feel-good snowball for Longzu, but just feels like you're getting the air punched out of your lungs when you're uh, the Rocks Tigers, when you're losing one after the other, just simultaneously, consecutively. Yeah. Just no room to breathe at all. It's like when you're facing against good SKT, yeah. when they, you know, when they were good. Uh, RIP, so sad, but uh, when, when they were super good and really on point, whenever they got a lead, they just shut you down so hard. Sometimes games would end in like four minutes and it would be like, what the hell happened? How do they win so fast? What, a couple of our guys got picked off and all of a sudden our Nexus turrets are going down? How did that happen? And Longju does like to do that as well. They do have that kind of same characteristic in terms of macro play. And this is kind of funny. Let's watch Khan get thrown around and still not die. Not enough damage. Not sure what it was that gave him that Binding. little burst of health at the end. If he doesn't have a Gargoyle uh, Stone Plate. Might have been his ults, although it was on cooldown, it looks yeah. like. There, Gorilla so. does have a Mikhail's, it might be that. But short story, uh, Khan didn't die, and Longzu got ahead. This Trundle just rips away at tanks. He's like, yeah, you want to go 1v2? Fine. I love Trundle, man. So I, I love that he's really good in this meta too now. One of my favorite top laners to play. But either way, you can see what it's doing here on the Rift. These big tanks really have no hope against them, especially when they're meta. Demanding so much aggro and attention so that the rest of the squad could focus on this top lane inhibitor. And I do have to question that um, Cloud Drake take by Rock's Tiger, so because when you're this far behind, you might as well leave the Cloud Drake up so that, you know, Longzu uh, takes much longer to potentially get an Elder Drake. The Weaver's Wall coming in. Longzu really posturing for this uh, top lane inhibitor turret. Oh man, look at how long that binding lasts through the Feather Storm into the arrow, but they unfortunately don't have enough to pick him off. Meanwhile, at the Nexus, Khan just doing his thing. Always pressuring, drawing so much attention, going in, using his uh, pillar to move Sangin away. Fortunately, it's not well timed with the wave and top lane, so. Gonna try to pick away some damage here as BDD comes in from mid. We're getting the picture in picture right now. And finally, we get to take a look at this top lane. It's, it's just the slow, creeping death right now for Longju as Long, or, or rather for, for the Rock Tigers as Longju begins to slowly push in. They're gonna take out that third inhibitor. And they're basically just chaining CC for fun at this point. Every time a binding lands, at least stun to follow it up. I do want to point out the mechanical, you know, awareness that Prey just displayed. Although Nature's Grab coming in from behind. Prey. Lindorong with teleport play, but Zaya yeah. deleted. 
totally deleted, and with Black Shields, it's not, it doesn't really do much if you're a Maokai against the Morgana. I can see why teams are beginning to pick this up, so. Con, Con calls, but. that was just, you know, overconfidence. He's going 1v3, he's having a little bit of fun, and why not? I mean, this team is just looking so unbeatable at this point. What are you gonna do against them? Rocks being totally cut out of the rift right now as a double kill goes over to BDD. That's gonna be the 1-0, easy peasy, in 34 minutes for Long Dew. In the end, Ross Tigers looking good for just a moment until they didn't look good anymore. <laughs> Again, it's these uh, mid and bottle, bottom table teams uh, shared characteristic of every once in a while, they, it, it, it's not like they don't know how to get ahead, right? It's not like they don't know how to fight, but it's just not being solid enough to not give advantages one after the other because Longzu Gaming just their style looking unstoppable at this point, looking like they're about to hit a six game winning streak after this one. Yep, that is what is predicted around the world. Seemingly nobody can stop this team. And yep, it's really fantastic macro early on. They got that very slight lead. Rocks, unfortunately, couldn't snowball a couple of the good things that they did into bigger advantages. And Wangju just held on, won a couple of team fights in crucial spots and were able to come back to win that game. So probably going to get a look at some of the replays from that game. BDD finishing that game on a 7.05 to Leah, and <laughs> As if he needed higher KDA, right? Exactly. I believe he was around 11. Nobody even coming close, uh, let alone in the mid lane charts or the you know whole yeah. LCK ranking. Cuz not looking like he's having a good time. Well, he, you know, as you said, a lot of these Elise players are having a rough time right now as they're getting caught out. And this was the big first fight, the gigantic seismic shove into Gorilla and uh, Cuz actually going a little bit too deep as Key does a very good job helping pick up those couple of kills. But again, Linderong just going too deep himself. And then the follow-up chase here by Longju eventually netting them the advantage. Great awareness dodge that stun from Syndra as well. And the pillar to really drive the dagger home, I feel. As Prey picks up the last kill onto Rakan and got the snowball rolling. Down to the last auto attack. Oh, this is so heartbreaking to watch. It just, I, I, I legitimately feel bad watching this. Yeah, this was Rox's big opportunity, right? You know, they, they jump onto Elise and they basically kill her. She does nothing in the fight and they get Khan cc the entire time as well and they almost burst him down. Everything's looking great. And then all of a sudden, they it's, get disorganized and Prey has perfect positioning and kills them all. He's, he's, he's so comfortable. Nothing's happening to him. It's like, it's like he's invisible or something. It's yeah. Like, you know, being an AD carry, everybody talks about mechanics. Mechanics definitely are the most important thing, you know, making sure you're auto attacking every time you can. But then the next thing is positioning, right? You need to have good positioning, make sure you're not getting caught out, you're very weak, you're a glass cannon. I think number three is timing, right? When you come into fights, do you go in right at the beginning to get the full amount of damage during the entirety of the fight? Or do you come in at the end, but after all the CC has been used, after they burned everything on a very tanky trundle, and then Elise, that wasn't really doing much all game, and then you come in and you shred them all down. And Prey, I mean, this guy's a veteran. He knows what he's doing. He knows the timing. And I think that was really the big key for him in that fight as he carried his team to victory. And another sub uh, under 35 minute victory for Longzu, this team again, so many 2-0s, so many quick games under 35 minutes. Yeah, well, looks like we'll have a sub here on the side of the Rocks Tigers as it looks like the Smitey Bear is entering the rift. We'll see if he can help the Rocks Tigers up against Longdu in game number two after a quick eight minute commercial break. We'll be right back, guys.